If the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a center, it's probably New York, which is where I live. So when my boss a day said I had to go to every MCU filming location in the city for a video, I said, okay, because I don't really have a choice. So let's go. So at the end of Captain America 1, we watch him break out of hibernation to learn that 70 years have passed and he's in the 21st century. He learns this in Times Square. We thought it best to break it to you slowly. Slowly? This former red light district is now the biggest, loudest, most overwhelming tourist trap in the world. Blinding lights, overpriced food, unhinged mascots, packed crowds, sex shops. If I were Cap and I saw this, I would have gone back into a coma. Honestly, I can't think of a worse location on the planet to ease that man into the 21st century. Maybe the International Space Station. Also, S.H.I.E.L.D., you're a secret government organization and you're located in Times Square. Why? Here we are at Washington Square Park. If you've ever seen Avengers Infinity War, this is where Iron Man and Spider-Man fight that big dude who works for Thanos. It's appropriate that this is the scene of a battle since this actual park stands above an estimated 20,000 corpses. Yeah, the city of New York purchased this land from a farm in the 1700s as a place to bury criminals, the poor, plague victims, and the unidentified. Today it serves as the unofficial quad of NYU. On a typical day, it's filled with students, artists, music, skateboarding, chess, and families, few of whom realize what lies beneath them. Next, we're gonna head down to 177A Bleecker Street, where in this scene, Thor visits the home of Doctor Strange, AKA the Sanctum Sanctorum. So here we are, and that behind me is 177 Bleecker Street. Probably not what you expected. If you saw Endgame, you may have noticed that Tony Stark seems fixated on the fact that Doctor Strange lives on Bleecker Street. He mentions it here. He wet my face with the planet while the Bleecker Street magician gave away the store. And he mentions it again here. Nice place in the village though. Yeah, on Sullivan Street. Mm, Bleecker. Why? Probably because Tony's a billionaire and billionaires love thinking about investment returns. According to the tax history for this building, the market value for this property in 2004 was $900,000. In 2020, the market value was $4.8 million. That alone would be an over 5x return. Looking more closely at the apartment, there doesn't seem to be any nod to the Sanctum Sanctorum. With the exception of this thing, which feels oddly out of place with the rest of the building. I don't know what it is, or why it's here, but I like it. Speaking of New York real estate, let's head uptown to take a look at Avengers Tower, shown here to be standing over Grand Central Terminal, which means that Tony Stark must have bought and destroyed the MetLife building, which as it stands today is estimated to be worth $3 billion. It's hard to know if converting it to Avengers Tower would increase or decrease its value. On the one hand, the renovations, technical improvements, self-sustaining power grid, and celebrity brand recognition could certainly add value. On the other, the fact that aliens and robots keep showing up every few years to destroy it and everything around it could be seen as a major liability. Further north, we find ourselves in Central Park at Bethesda Terrace. This is where Loki is teleported away from Earth at the end of the Avengers, which would make this the exact spot where Loki and Thor stood. A lot of people assume this is the fountain from Friends. It's not. But it is the site of a duel in Iron Fist, which, I don't know, do we, is that, do we care? Does that count? Is that MCU? This statue above it is called the Angel of the Waters and was designed by Emma Stebbins, the first woman to be commissioned for a major public art piece for the city in 1868. Finally, let's head to the Queensboro Bridge where Spider-Man ditches his school field trip to help the Avengers fight Thanos. As you can see, this bridge has not been destroyed, which is kind of a miracle given its history. It was built in 1909 as a non-union job, which pissed off the quasi-terrorist ring within the Iron Workers Union. So they decided to blow it up with dynamite just like they had to dozens of other buildings across the country that year. In the middle of laying down the dynamite, however, they realized the explosion would kill 30 men working in the powerhouse below the bridge. So they backed out and thus the bridge still stands today. 